So what I'm going to do is run these drills up against each other over a variety of different tasks to find out which one comes out best. So there we are, that's the drilling and the screw driving over and done with all those tests have been done. And you just saw a tiny sample of what we were doing there, but believe me, it took a long time. No wonder manufacturers don't tend to put their drill up against all the competition over a wide variety of tasks, because when you've driven 800 screws in on one battery charge alone, and then you've got to do the same thing again, starts to get to you. But in the end, we got a winner. And here it is, the Milwaukee 18 volt fuel. So what have we got? It's an 18 volt drill. It runs on a four amp hour battery and it has a brushless motor. It's got a metal gearbox, which actually makes it a little bit heavier than the competition. It comes in just over the two kilos, but it's a very chunky, robust bit of kit. Also, I like the side handle, which instead of clamping around the bezel or somewhere like that, actually clamps on top of the gearbox to grip the strongest part of the drill where the work's going on, which is actually that metal chunk in the middle there. So that's a good design. What we found with this drill is that across the broad range of tasks on an elimination test, it lasted longer than the others. But where it really comes into its own, where it really excelled, was on the heavier duty drilling tasks and screw driving tasks. When the sizes went up, the diameter of the screws went up, or when the holes got larger, this really came into its own. And it was the only one that was able to complete that auger test, to drive that auger through three thicknesses of softwood. None of the other drills managed to do that. So that's why it achieved the best in test mark and we're giving this four stars. And now the Makita is running on a three amp hour battery rather than the four amp hour battery of the competitors. So it was never going to give you the same kind of run time as the other. It's a good lightweight drill. It's actually no lighter than a DeWalt and you don't get the four amp hour run time on it. And also it will got marked down because it doesn't have a fuel gauge on it. If you want to know how much life is left in that battery, you have to put it onto the charger and then the charger plays you a little tune, a couple of beeps to tell you how much is in there. Now, I don't like that because it means on a noisy building site, you may not hear that little beep. And also it means you've got to run back to the charger to see if you've got enough juice left in the battery. So for me, that's something Makita needs to improve. Makita's a good brand. If you like it and you like the fact it's lightweight, it's a brushless motor. And if you're willing to put up with a three amp hour runtime, then not a bad drill at all. The Bosch, slightly disappointing in its runtime, in its performance, even on the four amp hour battery. Now, all this I can put down to the fact that it uses a brushed motor rather than the new brushless technology. So what that proves to us is that brushless motors do give you more runtime, they do give you more power. And so if you've got a four amp hour battery and you've got a brushless motor, you're gonna get more out of it. Bosch have set great store in their core pack battery system. What they've done here is they've mounted the cells inside there with air gaps in between them to take away the heat from the battery and therefore give it a longer life. That's something they're really pushing at the moment. And whether that makes any practical difference, I don't know, because I didn't detect an awful lot of heat on the other batteries, I must say. Where we tended to get the heat was around the motor and the gearbox. But anyway, that's the Bosch for you. 
4 amp hour battery brush technology. So both these drills are marking hard, they're getting two stars each. Next up we've got the DeWalt. Now this is a very lightweight drill, it's powerful, it's got a brushless motor, it's compact and it has a light battery. DeWalt use this XR extra runtime battery system and it certainly kicks out the power. The only place that it really fell down for me was on the larger tasks. It didn't do quite so well as the Milwaukee when it came to the heavier duty screw driving and also the auger test. It didn't quite have the torque to do that job. So this we're giving three stars. And finally, we've got the Metabo. Now the Metabo has got a five amp hour battery. So on paper, this one should have run a lot longer than the others. It's actually a brushed motor rather than a brushless motor. So that would mean that it wasn't giving quite the same output, but you would expect that at least to equal the four amp hour batteries on the brushless motor. Metabo seemed to have done an awful lot of things differently to everybody else. One thing we found that when we started doing some heavy duty drilling with this, it cut out after about 40 holes and it needed to have a rest before it started again. And that's due to the circuit and battery protection within the drill itself. So it's aiming to give you a longer life, but unfortunately what that meant is we couldn't really run it up against the other drills to give a comparative test because it would have been unfair. What we should have done is given all the drills an equal amount of rest time before we carried on. So we ran those other drills hard. We ran them from the moment they were charged up right to the point where they charged down. Because we weren't able to do that with the Metabo, we withdrew it from the competition.